Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hi everyone, welcome back again to the online NPTEL course on structure, form and architecture, the synergy. Today we are at lecture number 34 and uh, we will be discussing on cost effective structure and architecture. In my previous lectures when we discussed about art, uh, like structure for earthquake prone area or structure for wind prone area or even for the flood prone area, we discussed different techniques. and mostly they are uh, not uh, basically the low cost technique. But sometimes uh, in architecture or even to make structure for the people who are having poor affordability, uh, we have to adopt some you know low cost technology. But low cost technology does not mean that it will compromise the quality of structure or it will compromise the strength and it will compromise the safety of the users. So, how we can really make it cost effective for the building in terms of various uh, component of uh, your structure, uh, maybe the material that will be the discussion overall discussion in this lecture. So, without wasting time let us uh, get start this session. Now, what is effective cost effectiveness? So, this effectiveness uh, as we can see in this slide it is effective budgeting and the techniques which will reduce the cost of construction. So, that it is not to select something you know very cheap or very you know having very low cost, but we can make it uh, effective more effective with proper budgeting which is very much essential before you know starting any construction work. So, how the process start I guess all of you know like the moment we uh, need something to build, we desire something to build, then we approach to the planner, to the architect, to the designer and then we just say our requirements. And then based on the requirements what an architect or designer will do, like try to optimize the spaces whatever the available, you will have a site then you have some kind of fund available with you and within that one will the architect who are the specialist in that job will just try to optimize. So, that it will fulfill your requirement, it will be also done in your budget and at the same time it will make a trade off between you know like what can be done within that. But during that budgeting even the selection of material, the finishes of a building that will depend like whether I will go with the quota stone, marble or plain cement finish of the floor. So, that will really affect the total cost of construction. So, there will be a trade off between the you know quality of material, the you know different aspect of material like if you want to use some onyx marble very costly stone as a finish then definitely one has to pay more. But at the same time when you just deteriorate uh, the quality of material in terms of like uh, deteriorate the cost of a material, but we should also look uh, like we should not compromise with the strength of the material for which that is being used. Even there in the budgeting we can make it effective not only the design build form, but also the operation cost of the building. Now, how it is going to happen? If you have a site where you can get a good amount of daylight uh, from sun okay, and on an average you do not have any other uh, buildings or any surrounded structures which will make shadow to your uh, building and then you cannot get any such open space. 
in that case definitely your the orientation of your building could really uh, save some energy cost to a building ok. Then means a proper design will guide uh, this through you know maximize the daylight penetration to your uh, building. So, by that way also the design uh, will help you to reduce the energy operational energy cost to that and there are other aspect as well. So, the budgeting part and the design part really plays a crucial role along with the techniques that we use. Now, if we use some technique which is very complex in nature that involves machinery that involves skill labor then definitely the cost maybe the material cost is not that significant, but the other cost of the machinery and the equipment will uh, add some additional cost to your budget. So, that uh, is also crucial to choose uh, a good technique for that. Now, coming back to the slide again in this effective use of locally available materials along with improved skill and technology can make a construction cost effective. Why? If a material is available locally, locally does not mean that next to your site, but within a minimum bridge. So, that the transportation cost of a building uh, material will be reduced. At the same time, uh, like the damage to the material will also get uh, some kind of reduction in, in the total figure. And at the same time, if it is locally available, if that is already uh, being you know uh, matches with the nature. So, that can add some uh, more uh, you know beauty into that. So, sometimes also in this uh, we have a different subject called vernacular architecture and uh, some of you already gone through that uh, subject. So, where how we can use the locally available material, but we have to remember one thing we cannot compromise anything on the strength of the building performance of the building and the life of the structure. So, we just use something and then tomorrow I have to replace it and tomorrow it will not sustain after a heavy wind or so that will not really help. Even in uh, the last uh, discussion when we are talking about the flood resistant structure, uh, I have told you that if you increase your plinth level above your uh, like base flood elevation level. So, definitely the initial cost to the building is high, but definitely the con consequence of that like it will be really helpful where uh, there is a flood situation, then your building will be in safe position. So, whether you will invest initially to secure it to uh, uh, you know uh, increase the uh, durability and then longevity of your uh, building that is definitely a call that one has to take. So, in this case you can use the locally available material, you can improve that material and also improve the construction technology. You adopt some uh, emerging technologies that we will discuss uh, in this also, then probably that can give you a desired solution. So, here you can see this structure is being made with the mud, compressed mud where uh, like normally we cannot simply take this mud because you know in a area where there is any rainfall and then this all washed out. But at the same time uh, like if we just improve uh, the material with you know some admixture of the cement as fine uh, like as a binder then definitely that can improve the situation and that can use as a building material. Now, moving forward we have to understand this six aims of any construction and each of them are contributing to the cost. Now, where we are talking about in this lecture uh, on cost effectiveness. So, we can contribute to each of these aims and then we can reduce some cost in certain point of time. So, let us look uh, into this what are these six aims. So, it relates with the manpower since manpower includes the fees that you pay for the architect like tomorrow who are pursuing architecture and then um, want to become architect. So, definitely you will do that work in terms of some professional fees and then 
as a client if you go to an architect, so the cost involved. During the construction you have to pay to the contractor or to the labor and then various resource persons, the plumbing person, the electrical person, so one has to pay either you uh, pay directly to a contractor and then he will take care of the distribution and how the appointment or else you have to pay. So, that is very important that includes like your architect, then engineer, then you have uh, labor, skill labor, then semi skill labor this is very important and then this is also very important for us. We cannot deny it. If we do not have the wealth, we do not have the money, then probably we cannot uh, fulfill some of the desire at that extent. Then the time is another important. If one can manage the time of construction, then definitely that can uh, also manage the budget. If a project is uh, getting delayed by some kind of uh, situation where the, it was not pre-planned or the project is not properly managed, then that will increase the cost of the equipment hire uh, that you hired or the cost of the labor. You cannot simply say that the work uh, is getting delayed, I will cut the salary, something will be very complicated. Then the methods whether you will go with a very manual method, whether you want fast construction and then you use some kind of uh, you know automation to that, that can also contribute to the cost. The material, the material can be conventional material, but at the same time now in this particular uh, time we are uh, already um, uh, you know getting some sense of uh, the you know future shortage like for the conventional materials. So, like water will be a problem then getting the uh, coarse aggregate and then sand uh, as fine aggregate. So, this will be very much problematic. So, if we can think of some alternative materials that would help us to make our things uh, cost effective and without compromising the strength uh, means whatever the strength we can get from a concrete and if we use the alternative material to concrete, we should achieve that particular strength. Then uh, whether you use the smart system, whether you use some advanced machine for your construction especially and it depends on the scale of the project. If you want to make a small one uh, story building and then I am, uh, I am planning to make a high rise like Sangai Tower or Burj Khalifa, then definitely the machinery that required the scale will differ a lot. So, definitely for them the constraint the criteria are different, but whereas like when we think of uh, the buildings uh, maybe something uh, low cost housing or maybe cost effective uh, housing, then uh, selection of the machine can also differ the cost of construction. So, here that is the reason like building material labor cost, building material cost, size of construction that this is basically the scale. If you just have uh, just think of precast um, or prefabricated uh, element like construction material that means, it will not be uh, casted uh, in uh, the side or cast in situ. It is basically fabricated somewhere rails and it will be just you know plug and play a kind of arrangement. Then in that case like for a small construction it will not be cost effective because you have to have a uh, area where this prefabrication can grow you need some kind of machinery. So, for a large scale construction definitely one can set up this prefab uh, you know set up or lab and then can be tested and then um, you know can bring into site and then uh, that can be easily used and which will save time, which will also maintain the quality and um, like reduce the errors. The type of buildings definitely uh, this is another factor that is uh, influencing the cost of construction. Whether we go with the very simplistic, very simple form of uh, structure like I will make just uh, you know housing a very rectangular shape, 
the building typology is something else. But if we just plan to do something of a auditorium or a big convention hall with a dome, then definitely that will change the uh, considerations will also change. The construction technique as already have dis uh, discussed then the time, this time is the duration in one sense and also that you know time of the year. So, if you pick up a good time for a like uh, construction not uh, heavy construction that will take uh, year after year, but for uh, any construction that can be managed with 2, 3 months then where when you will do it like any uh, RCC construction will require some curing then whether you will plan it um, before rainy season or after rainy season. So, these, uh, these are the things that will really affect the cost of construction. Now, achieving cost effectiveness, so there are many techniques, but uh, this cost effective architecture and structure that could be a, a full fledged course, uh, but here uh, my uh, point is to just give a very brief idea focusing on some of the selective uh, material, but uh, definitely what you need to do like you have to extend the list. After this discussion definitely you get certain idea and then uh, based on the links I have in, in this slide or you search more on different you know uh, maybe materials, different techniques by which we can achieve this. So, four uh, points that uh, I would like to say here the replacing conventional material with the alternative materials that is very important as because like not only um, like a new thing to be tested and uh, some innovation can be applied, it is not exactly the case, but uh, the conventional materials now it is something it is depleting. So, this depletion uh, will be very rapid because of like the high demand. Each day many houses are being built across the globe and the construction should be very much uh, accurate and also timely deliver uh, you know it has to be timely delivered. So, with the stipulated time uh, like definitely conventional material will take time to get uh, the curing and to get the adequate strength. So, alternative materials like pre uh, prefabricated uh, uh, you know concrete material or else something different uh, technology that can help uh, those materials to plug in very quickly. So, that can be used. Now, in this case alternative material to the conventional material does not mean that the alternative will be cheaper, but the main point is some way uh, or rather it will affect the cost of the building. Now, maybe in case uh, one alternative material is costlier than the conventional material, but the time it will take to complete the project and the, the during that time all the labor who are working for the project and they are if you consider the salary to that and then the rent for those equipments definitely overall cost um, can uh, be lower where you use those kind of alternative uh, materials. Now, innovative construction technique that we need to adopt like whether it is uh, you know traditional post beam structure then step by step that we go or else this is just you know uh, plug and play concept with the prefabricated panels, the walls, doors is already uh, like what you have to bring to the side and then assemble. So, this kind of technology can be used even uh, some of my presentations I have shown about, I have talked about the 3D painting. So, where with the 3D help of 3D printer we can make houses. So, uh, these are the things that are already uh, you know coming to the market and in future. Uh, maybe uh, will be going for a very super fast construction technique and then we can get a good quality um, you know building uh, in, in uh, quick time. Now, uh, again if you take the third point then it is design optimization of the building which is also essential. Even you select the right material, even you select the right technique, but uh, the arrangement of your building, the design that is the prime job of uh, an architect, uh, then that case like how to optimize the space, how to really make uh, each line, the drawing you make that will be something like a wall or door, window. So, 
how you can optimize it. Say for example, if you uh, make such a certain length and then uh, to in order to fill that particular length with some brick, so you have to cut always some brick and you have to make the joints or else you make some certain angle where like or the curve where it is very difficult and there will be more wastage of brick to get this particular curvature. So, how you can tackle it uh, in a better way? So, that design should uh, tell about that. So, wastage should be minimized in terms of the uh, you know available space uh, also the material. Now, the planning and management of construction, even you have very good uh, drawing with you, very well designed, very well optimized uh, architectural design, you have good technology, you have good materials, but in the management when you, uh, you are going to implement it on site and there is some mismanagement. So, there is not a good flow like when the materials should to be procured and when it to be uh, you know cured. So, the proper management also influence on the cost effectiveness of any construction project and that too for the building as well. Now, coming to uh, the cost effectiveness of a very simple building uh, and this uh, lecture as I already mentioned that this topic is very interesting and that can be delivered through a number of lectures and that could be a self uh, sufficient subject uh, for the student of architecture or you know pursuing civil engineering or anyone having the allied area or interest. But in this uh, presentation I will try to focus on uh, small scale uh, building uh, not skyscraper or so. So, where basically in the construction technique if you see in this slide. Uh, so, basically we can divide our structure in four component foundation, wall, lintel, roof and also you can consider the plinth and other components, but these are the uh, major components by which if you explode a building. So, these are the cases uh, which is uh, very essential to uh, you know get all, all kind of uh, like precision. Now, coming to the foundation, so for uh, one story, two story building earlier uh, there are examples where people they used the arch foundation or the inverted arch foundation it is considered to be uh, you know cost effective almost it can save up to 40 percent construction cost of the foundation because the foundation itself is uh, getting a, a huge construction. When you go for the superstructure uh, which is above the ground uh, then um, compared to the other cost which is your foundation and footing is higher. Uh, and this arch foundation for ordinary soil. So, we have to remember this that uh, the soil condition we cannot always uh, make foundations uh, similar to all of soil conditions. Sometimes you may have a very good uh, shape, uh, shape bearing capacity uh, of soil. So, SBC of soil will determine the type of foundation that we can go. No, take. So, it may be of isolated foundation, combined foundation, then we can go for the pile foundation and the mat foundation. So, it depends on that. So, we are not going to discuss that in detail in this presentation, but for ordinary soil where uh, the bearing capacity is good enough. So, arch foundation can really help it uh, to you know uh, get the structure, but where the soil is of black cotton type and then this is a serious issue. Then probably we sh will not get enough uh, strength at the lower depth. Then probably uh, in that case we have to go for under rim uh, pile or foundation. So, in this case that pile being used and then uh, the under rim has been created to make the grip. So, that will also uh, help to reduce the soil pressure and the, that particular movement. Coming to the wall, so wall construction again like uh, you must have studied different kind of brick bonds where we consider the brick wall and here we just discuss on the uh, wall with the brick um, and definitely that wall can be made of something else. We can use timber, we can use the RCC wall as a shear wall or else we just use the steel frame and then the 
glass panel to that. Uh, but in this case, uh, like when you discuss about the brick wall, so we have uh, you know used the English bond or the Flemish bond, but the problem with them uh, is not with the strength or something, they are really good. But at the same time, in order to make it uh, cost effective, we can think of reducing the material and that can be achieved with uh, cavity wall. So, cavity wall construction will help to reduce the number of material uh, for a given area or perimeter or given volume of work. At the same time, that cavity will also act as an insulator. So, that is a dual added advantage to that and one of such cavity wall construction uh, that is there in this slide that is called rat trap bond. And here you can see this jeep image I have picked up from internet. So, here you can see how it is being laid. So, uh, a brick size uh, like it is basically being made like this where the cavity is being maintained. So, that you can uh, get uh, your uh, you know adequate width uh, of the wall at the same time you get some area for insulation and definitely as because the same uh, area is being covered. So, with a void then definitely that is saving the um, you know the volume of the brick, but at the same time uh, there is another important uh, parameters that is your um, the use of the brick. So, whenever you use the uh, English bond or Flemish bond then we have to cut the brick we have to use the queen closer or sometimes uh, you have to get the half bat, but in this case mostly we will be using the full size brick. So, that wastage also to be uh, managed. But the constraint it when you design. So, we have to design with the unit. So, all the doors, windows, opening should be designed accordingly. So, that there will be no such cut and then there will be some break. In order to giving strength to this wall because this is useful for one story, two story events there are examples of three story building. We can use some kind of reinforcement uh, to give the strength. Coming to the lintel in place, uh, in place of a RCC uh, lintel, we can go for the brick arch uh, which will help and reduce up to 30 to 40 percent of the cost. But again uh, the case is where uh, this can be applied where there is no such problem with the earthquake because in earthquake we have uh, discussed that if there is this is a building is situated or it has to be planned in earthquake prone area. So, we have to give a um, band. So, then probably this piece lintel will not help, but uh, yes definitely arch can be one of the option and many buildings uh, you know in earlier days even in some part of uh, the country even uh, across the country people they still use the arch uh, to you know even give a nice safe this curvature giving a nice aesthetic whether it is segmental arch or semicircular arch. Coming to the roof, uh, yes, here uh, we instead of uh, plain, uh, you know, homogeneous and same thickness uh, slab, concrete slab. Uh, now, this is another cost effective technique where uh, use some kind of terracotta tiles or this kind of form, and then the concreting has been done, and then after removing the shuttering from the bottom, it will look like this. So, without compromising the strength uh, this can be achieved with the filler slab and that can save up to 20 to 25 percent of the cost compared to the uh, like your traditional um, concrete RCC slab. So, this is going to be uh, very much helpful to reduce the cost of the building and at the same time this kind of arrangement even like someone may try something different like to put the lights uh, suppose these are the hollow members so one can use some light fixture and all. So, that will also enhance the aesthetic view. Now, coming to the building materials there are like a good number of materials you can list upon 100 or something like that materials that are now being tested and in a process to apply in different context uh, as a cost effective material and 
Now it is the time where due to the scarcity of the raw materials people are uh, using the waste material to create the building materials. There are different institutions, different uh, you know research uh, labs, they are developing this uh, within India even uh, across India. So, now there I have just selected few of them which are very much promising in the present day and already that big used in some of the building construction. So, first uh, is your stabilized compressed art block which is basically also the compressed mart block. Then fly as gypsum, the so fly as brick that we know then fly as lime gypsum product that can be used as a alternative to the mortar. Then clay rate uh, mart brand brick, so that is basically alumina waste or bauxite that can be used. Then the precast uh, stone blocks or precast uh, stone uh, dust concrete block. So, these are alternative available in brick size alternative to the brick and the construction will definitely give higher strength and that can be used. Then the other alternative is basically the autoclaved aerated concrete which is light concrete material and also available in block. So, in uh, case of you know uh, using the mud uh, and the um, burnt mud brick. So, alternative materials are available to make the wall construction and this can be used for different purposes as well. So, coming to the stabilized compressed earth blocks. So, this is basically the unburnt. So, there is no energy required to burn it. So, this is hundred, uh, uh, this is the brick where uh, the mud is uh, used extensively and where the 5 percent and there is some variation 5 percent and then 5 to 10 percent variation with the cement or lime as, uh, as some adhesive and that has been compressed with some machine. So, that is giving enough strength and this is economical stronger uh, than the conventional one and also the saving uh, energy uh, like already for uh, traditional process the mud has to be burned and then that needs some fuel uh, and all and then simple manufacturing and here you can see that uh, this block can be used that is giving enough strength. Coming to the fly ash, now fly ash is basically the industry waste and now this is something where now uh, many parts in many parts in India. So, they are in practice to use the fly ash. So, less water absorption can you know be one of the you know saving in the water industry. Then uh, it is also saving the uh, 30 percent cement then basically the waste out of waste. So, whenever the fly ash is basically the waste and then that can be used, it is having a good strain that can be used at even if it is not as a load bearing. Now, in the case of the frame structure, most of the structure are the concrete frame structure. So, this can be used as a partition wall or the external wall or sometimes even for the foundation or for the low cost construction. Similarly, the fly ash lime gypsum product can be used that is manufactured by blending fly ash lime and uh, calcinate gypsum. So, it is uh, basically a cementation material like plaster which can be used to make the joints etcetera. Coming to the clay rate mud uh, brand bricks, so alumina rate mud or the bauxite, this waste is being used to get this. Now, the advantage with this prominent red color if you really plan well for the external like exposed brick work construction for a building. So, that can give a pleasing environment as you can see in this slide. Coming to the precast stone blocks, so it is again made of the waste stone pieces where there are the stone being cut for some purposes. So, that has been cut in a very nice manner that can be easily used. Sometimes even those stone dust can be added as in the cement concrete mortar and that can give a precursed block and that is little bit bigger than the conventional brick size and that can give you nice uh, uh, you know aesthetic value as well as good strain to make this kind of construction. The construction is speedy and then uh, in this case uh, like it can save uh, the use of cement and all. Coming to the autoclaved aerated uh, concrete blocks, in this case uh, as I mentioned earlier, this is 
lightweight uh, then precast and foam concrete so basically the compared to the you know concrete uh, you know block of similar size this is having uh, lighter weight so composed of quartz and calcinate gypsum lime cement water and aluminum powder and cured under heat and pressure in an autoclave that's why the name also come into picture so that can be used as a external wall or it may be also used in the internal and this is being useful as you can see that the within the rc frame that uh, is this block being used this is as because it is light it is easy for the you know workman uh, workmen for you know easily handle it uh, and can be used with few layers so that uh, full wall can be made now coming to some uh, case study where the cost effective uh, material or technology being used so this is something in mn sebum so that is something of a mud uh, structure so it's considered to be high rise uh, and then compared to that uh, this is something really beautiful in uh, trivandrapuram so in this case this is center for development studies and many of the work of lori baker uh, you will find here. So, the use of brick, different brick bonds and uh, not only the cost saving that whole uh, architecture, the beauty is matching with the nature and also this is something really interesting. Similar to that like use of the corrugated sheet or uh, some steel and then the compressed block. Uh, so, we can get a very beautiful architecture and definitely we are not talking about some uh, high rise building where the mechanical system is required, but for uh, one story, two story building this kind of uh, you know compressed mud block, fly as brick or the precast material can be used. This is another one where the brick exposed brick being used and also the filler slab that I have shown during that you know uh, roof construction uh, technique. So, this is giving very nice uh, view uh, from the inside. So, not only we are saving the money as well as also we uh, improve uh, the aesthetic value to it. Now, it is all uh, up to us like what we adopt or what we not because definitely when there is some reduction of the material or picking up a new technology or material. So, we rely on uh, like whether it is tested whether it is giving it will give the similar uh, result or not we are much scared. And this is basically the building construction like starting from planning to the execution and the final you will start leaving your house it, it is not very short term uh, process because a building is planned and then it will take some time for the construction and then you start leaving. So, during whole period it will take some time to adjust it and when you get some examples when we. Um, you see the test results then only we can adopt that techniques or the materials. But uh, now uh, there are different you know developers they are adopting this and it is quite being successful in case of prefabrication there are some construction in China, Japan even all over the world even in India there are some projects which has been completed with very short time with the precast material. So, in days to come we uh, really uh, you know uh, all of us as a majority we should go for this kind of you know precast construction. So, which will save the time and at the same uh, way uh, like the alternative search of alternative material. So, this alternative materials uh, will save and then basically the last but not the least what we need to show that uh, that is basically the innovation. So, we have to rely on the innovation then you have taste it and then uh, adopt. So, this adaptability of uh, new techniques new materials will take time, but in due course of time definitely one can go. So, starting from your uh, building design starting from selecting of the material the right technique. Uh, uh, the right orientation of the building different way of maximizing daylight. So, the whole together like from the planning to the execution and it is the total lifetime of the building if we can properly uh, plan it if we properly budget it then definitely that could be a good 
cost effective uh, structure and architecture as well and without compromising. So, I am repeating this sentence again and again, we can pick up the cost effective things, but without compromising the quality related to the strength of the building, related to the aesthetics, related to the performance of the building in different uh, you know load or maybe different externalities. With this I conclude here and uh, this is uh, one of the material already I have given earlier slide and I would really uh, want to thank you again to take part in this and uh, the next task for you to you know enhance the list. I have picked up few materials, I have picked up few technologies, but there are a number of techniques available. So, you search and we will discuss over forum and with that we will be waiting for the next discussion that is on the structure and light in architecture, how the structure can help to improve the lighting of architecture and focus will be on the day lighting. As I have just mentioned that not only all uh, orientation building, so how you can optimize the light uh, uh, through your structural design or architectural form that can save some energy for artificial lighting and ventilation. So, we will be uh, discussing on light and structure in the next lecture. So, we will be meeting then, thank you.